Well, I'm proud of Angel Dust because it was uh, maybe not the record that people wanted or expected, but it was the record that we came up with when we all put our shoulders to the grindstone and pulled on the rope and did the best we could, challenged ourselves, challenged each other. And uh, I'm proud of that, yeah, for sure. Favorite tunes, I don't pick favorites. Um, I love how that album fits together beautifully when you put it on side one. I guess they don't do that anymore, but the whole thing runs together with the sequence beautifully from start to finish, from Land of Sunshine to uh, Midnight Cowboy. You know, I love a lot of songs on there. Caffeine, Be Aggressive, uh, I don't know. Midlife Crisis, Everything's Ruined. Uh, I like Jizz Lauer a lot. So hard for me to play favorites. It, it's an album I'm very satisfied with, very pleased with. It wasn't accidental. We did it on purpose. It was uh, us doing our best to follow up an extremely commercial record with something that uh, wasn't necessarily expected. And I feel good about it. You look at the album before that real thing it seems to be maybe a lot more linear and rock oriented with a few twists here and there but a little bit more straightforward than angel dust angel dust has some extreme i think experimental and creative things involved in it and he was definitely a part of it It represents uh, us sticking to our guns and believing in what we did to the extreme, and I feel very good about that. I'm pretty proud of that. I'm not one to keep favorites of albums, um, so I can find good things about all of them, and that is definitely something I feel really good about because it was a battle internally and externally, and. I feel good about how it turned out. No, not at all. I think personally I was going through a lot of stuff at that time. I was, uh, yeah, doing bad drugs at the time, so getting involved in that. And uh, it was a struggle. I think like talking about being gay in the public, though, at the time felt just kind of like one of those bratty things that like, didn't matter to me, it shouldn't matter to anyone. It was sort of a, it was a, a difficult sort of like tiptoeing through process for me that I acknowledge now as something that was uh, kind of forming who I was and kind of forming the time that I was in. It was difficult and I think, I don't know if it was connected to drug use, but um, it was, it was a, 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 a difficult time and uh, the difficulties definitely, for me, um, pushed my artistry in a certain direction with the record. Um, as far as a hiatus going, like, I don't really even consider what happened after Angel Dust, the cycle of that, as a hiatus. Losing Jim was definitely uh, a big step, and it took a lot to sort of get from point A being Bye Bye Jim to point B being like, you know, what we were going to do next. We kind of were always a band before Jim joined the band. We were always a band that were sort of looking for a guitar player. Billy and Mike and I had such a strong sort of foundation. We were very precious about bringing in another person. Mike P came and he just fit naturally and sort of did what he did. But guitar wise, we always had a hard time. So when Jim left, it was uh, kind of back to square one and that um, we couldn't find someone for a long time that would fit the bill. And we were like pretty precious about that decision. So I guess that was part of the reason for like the hiatus uh, going on. It doesn't feel like a hiatus. It, Most artist who embarks on a new project will tell you that uh, 
the impulse to change or the decisions that you make comes on just naturally. Um, so for us, it was that. It was a natural sort of just uh, transition into what Angel Dust was. But saying that, it's also probably pertinent to point out the couple of years before we recorded Angel Dust, going into that process uh, was pretty intense and changed us as a band. Um, We've been working as a band for a long time, uh, touring, making records, kind of relentlessly, and we had had our first kind of taste of success and our first taste of like people uh, liking us and talking about us and appreciating us. And uh, I don't know, uh, we're kind of a fickle bunch of people. I know Billy and myself particularly were uh, super sarcastic kids and um, kind of had a lot of attitude. So when we were suddenly accoladed with a lot of like praise and attention for something that we had done, rather than just sort of take it and be happy with it, I think we took it further and said, kind of like to our uh, people that liked us and said, oh yeah, well how do you like this? in a kind of bratty way. So there was a way that we kind of stretched in making Angel Dust that was based on sort of like what had happened the past couple of years. Stylistically too, I think we just wanted to try new things and all of us collectively learned, kind of leaned into a, a more darker sound because that felt bold and um, yeah, kind of not weak. Not, not weak, but it just felt like um, a strong stance to take, to sort of double down and be not tough, but dark and challenging. That is flattering, because uh, like I was saying before, it was definitely a bold move to make that record. So when we sat down and started exploring in the studio, and um, making decisions that weren't uh, traditional or orthodox, it felt at the time like a challenge and it was kind of scary. Um, for me anyway, I can only speak for myself, but it was like we were doing things that were dark and twisted and uh, it didn't feel like we were aiming uh, for the mainstream, so to speak. We always kind of, in a cheeky way, talked about like addressing uh, popular culture and making kind of like hit songs, but it was just sort of tongue in cheek always. Uh, with Angel Dust, I think we just set out to sort of like explore. And that was a scary place for young people to be, for us as a band, for me as a, as a uh, writer. So uh, to have people appreciate it as sort of like their favorite is really uh, flattering. Um, there was a second part of the question, I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, the title, Angel Dust. That's nice too, thank you. Uh, the question was about the title and Kerrang mentioned it as one of their favorite record titles, which is cool. I think that was on me. I think I chose Angel Dust. I liked the sort of combination of sweet and scary, uh, especially like that drug at the time was just coming out, Angel Dust, and it was this, uh, none of us were really like Angel Dust people. We never took that drug or anything, but the concept of it being this like really sweet and syrupy, almost fairy tale sort of name for something that was dark and fucked up, that was definitely uh, interesting. Uh, the record cover concept sort of like, I had always imagined being more of like a pretty beautiful Hallmark card scenario with a beautiful swan coming out of the water and then called angel dust uh where we went was a little bit more on the nose i think uh we ended up using that cover art because jim was really fond of that particular photographer and the darkness of that i had kind of argued for uh just going straight, like beautiful imagery, like a Hallmark card, like nature, and they're just having angel dust. I thought that would have spoken better. Uh, but that's where we went. It's like, you know, you compromise in this situation. There was a lot. I mean, there's been a lot written about 
you know, how frustrated we were. And parts of it were pretty frustrating because we had a lot of days off. We played like every three days and we sat around and we're left to our own devices. <laughs> we're all really different people and we're all creative people. And um, sometimes without a place to put that energy, it goes into some weird places. Uh, I mean, it did, but it was a lot of fun uh, also. I mean, we tried to get out of that scene a little bit because, you know, we were, we were traveling the world and, and we were seeing these amazing places. And I, I remember like in Germany, somebody gave me a car <laughs> And uh, I did the, the GNR tour there uh, in my car. Uh, I didn't have it registered, I didn't have insurance. And we would like, I would go in with different band members and, and, and uh, sometimes like, I remember we go out one night uh, on a night off and like, there was like 10 people in that car. <laughs> and, uh, it was fun, like, you know, we were, we were, you know, probably, I don't know, late twenties and the world was open to us. And we were kind of in this period, like with Angel Dust, where we were all about experimenting with music, but we were experimenting with everything. I mean, we were, we were trying to take as much stimulation as we possibly could. And we, we, we gave it our best shot. So I would say in a really weird way, um, there were very frustrating parts of that tour, uh, but there were also like really amazing parts of that tour that I, I don't, I mean, I kind of feel happy that I got to live through it because uh, it was a really unique period of time. I mean, you know, the, the, the Berlin Wall had fallen. So I remember like we played in, in Berlin and, and the hotel was in East Germany and it still hadn't been developed yet. And everything was still really like the Wild West. And um, it was a blast. Uh, we loved it actually. Well, I mean, it really began, we started writing it when we were on tour in Brazil. Uh, and this was kind of actually probably contributed to, to our approach to the album. We had just finished The Real Thing, it was done. And we, we did a successful show in Rock and Rio in probably 1990, and they asked us to come back in 1991. But they booked an entire month in Brazil. And back then, Bands did not tour Brazil for a month. Definitely not bands from the States. Uh, so, you know, we were there for quite a long time and we played in a lot of places. And that was a serious adventure. We were, we played in the Amazon. We played, I mean, it was just wild times. And Brazil was a wild place back then. We met a lot of people. It was just crazy uh, and stimulating. Like we were all, we all got caught into the adventure of it. Uh, the food, you know, the people, just the madness of the, of the, of the country itself, which is completely a, a crazy country. And we really bonded with that. And, and I think that uh, that's when we started writing music for Angel Dust. And actually, I think that the spirit of that trip might have contributed to the spirit of how we decided to go into making this music. Because I think, you know, the real thing was this popular record in America at the time and we played it to death for about a year year and a half but um I think that you know we were looking for something more we were looking for some to get our adrenaline going and I think that that we were geared in that direction at that time and I think that you know that's kind of probably a big part of the fuel of, of what got us into that state of mind. Yeah. 